Test one, two. Welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, this evening. I'm gonna give um, everybody a few more minutes. We have uh, a couple of more minutes before we get started, but I just wanted to say hello. And before we do get started, just uh, in the um, message, just type that you can hear me and see me and see my presentation. If you take a few minutes just to, uh, to say, yes, I can hear you. Good, thank you. All good. <clears throat> Excellent. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Good stuff. Good. We got a couple of minutes, so I'm just going to kind of uh, make sure you guys are all can see me, can hear me. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the um, uh, ground rules for the next hour, and then we're just going to get started. We're going to have a lot of fun today. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Elias Marku. I'm going to be your, um, your uh, teacher, your educator tonight and I'm excited. I'm excited. Those of you who are joining, uh, just make sure you can hear me, see me, to say it's all good. Um, you know, sit back, get into your comfy clothes, wherever you are. Um, get yourself a nice warm cup of tea. You might want a little bit of, uh, um, you know, some nice warm tea, maybe a drink, maybe you're having dinner, you know, whatever you're doing, sit back and relax and enjoy. Those who have joined us, my name is Dr. Marcou. We will be starting shortly in about one minute. If you can hear me, let me know. If you can't, let me know. Um, hopefully uh, everybody can hear me, see me. We got loud and clears. Hi, MJ. I saw you. I'm excited you're here. Hello everyone, those who are joining us. I see people filing into the uh, Zoom room. Welcome, my name is Dr. Lice Marcou. I will be your host tonight. And uh, I just wanna know that you can hear me, you can see me. Um, and uh, in about 30 seconds, we're gonna get started and we're gonna have a lot of fun, okay? Welcome everyone. Welcome to this amazing evening, one hour of talking about stress, talking about immunity. I wanna introduce myself. My name is Dr. Elias Marcou. I'm so happy to have you all being part of our uh, presentation here tonight. We're gonna to have a lot of fun. There's gonna be an hour jam packed of education, of wellness, of lifestyle. I think you're all gonna really enjoy this presentation. I wanna thank you all for coming here and spending your one hour with me. I hope you're sitting in somewhere comfortable, <clears throat> you know, with a cup of tea and maybe in your comfies, maybe you got your favorite slippers on, maybe you have uh, your favorite chamomile tea, you know, just sit back and relax and enjoy, enjoy the show. We're gonna talk about stress and immunity today. That's our big topic. And, um, you know, I want to say hello to my friends out there who have joined us here tonight. Um, Emily, Bal, Jody, Judy, welcome. Uh, I'm so happy that you're here with me. You know what, just to put you in context, I'm actually still in my office. About a half hour ago, I just finished seeing my patients. 
I quickly set up here in my office and, uh, uh, you know, I'm ready to go. I've, I've had a full day of patients. I was in at eight o'clock. We had about, um, uh, I think, 19 patients today I saw, and uh, it was a good day. We had, a, we had a lot of fun. And now I'm excited to be here with you. So let's get started. And listen, I really want to make this interactive. So you have a chat chat bar there. If you have questions, put them up. Maybe someone in the chat, if you can answer it, go ahead and answer it. Um, there's a question uh, section. Please put your questions up. I want to answer as many as I can. We're going to have 15 minutes at the end to just really gun through a whole bunch of questions. And then hopefully at the end, you all feel satisfied and are happy and are going to enjoy the rest of your evening. So let's get started. Um, my name is Dr. Elias Marcou. I was a former firefighter and I, and, and I had this passion of patient care. Eventually one day I decided, you know what? I had a wonderful naturopath who treated me as I was a firefighter and said, I can do this job. I really can treat patients and take care of patients. And I got into the naturopathic profession. I'm a, I'm a naturopathic licensed doctor here in Ontario. And uh, you know, here on this webinar, I'm just here to educate you. I'm gonna give you like as if you're sitting here with an hour with Dr. Marcou, and I'm gonna give you everything I possibly can. 18 years of experience, 100,000 patient visits, you know, we're, we're, you know you're, I'm going to give you the, a wealth of information today. I hope you really enjoy it. I know I'm going to have fun here today. So um, what I want to do is I really want to keep this interactive. I want you guys to answer questions. At the end, I'm going to spend a little bit more time answering your questions, and I hope I get through all of you. But I do want us to start kind of thinking about, you know, why we're here today. And you know what, what, what you know, prompted you to sign up to this uh, awesome webinar to talk about stress and immunity. And I want you just to kind of you know, really think about the questions that we're going to dive deep into. You know, some patients often ask me, you know, I can't sleep. Does this affect my immune system? Well, it does. And we'll talk about it in our presentation. I have tremendous amount of stress, especially during this COVID time and, and so forth. Does it affect my immune system? It actually does, and I'll tell you how as you sit around and we get into the depths of this presentation. What can I take to boost my immune system? So I'm assuming we're talking about vitamins and minerals, and guess what? All the answers are in my presentation today, so I hope you stick around. And can I keep my stress down? And we'll talk about that also. So those of you who have questions and you, know, you wanna get into it, by all means share, and, and we're going to get to them at the end, and I'm going to try to rapid fire through a bunch of questions using uh, my knowledge. So, um, you know, our, uh, our uh, sponsor today is going to pick one random lucky person on this webinar, and you're going to get a nice little giveaway. So I hope you guys enjoy that. So let's get started. So let's ask some questions. You know, I've already started asking you questions. Dr. Marcou, you know, I, I have a weak immune system. What can I do to boost it? Well, there's a few things that we're going to get into. How many of you, you know, are worried about your immune system? How many of you are worried about the stress in your life? How many of you are worried that the stress you have in your life is affecting your immune system? How many of you think little things in your lifestyle are contributing to the really poor immune that you have? Well, today, my friends, I'm going to take the opportunity to kind of educate you and show you the things that you should keep in mind as we go through. I want to keep this really simple. I want to keep it fundamental and foundational. I want you guys all to understand that we are here to teach you the basics that tomorrow, if when you wake up, you can start these things right away. I want to get through some things that are really educational and simple. And then finally, the things I'm going to share with you are life changing. Sometimes we forget to do the simple things in life to change our lives. We do the complicated things. Um, and you know, the, these are the things that we eventually, um, we wanna get into, the basic things. And I was reading this book yesterday on habit, uh, how to change bad habits, it's called Atomic Habits by uh, James Cleary. And he talked about the little things you do Consistently, oh, consistently over time are the things that will give you big results. And that's what we're going to get into today. And I hope you guys have fun. So the, the presentation is called the de-stress equation. This is my equation. I put it together. I thought about what are the things you need to know to de-stress. And we're going to address the mess about stress. Uh, I thought that was a little catchy. So we'll talk about drinking chamomile. We'll talk about the sleep. And I'm going to break my equation down into a more specific kind of 
uh, uh, way to think about um, the uh, stress and de-stressing. So everybody has a story. Let me share you my story and hopefully you guys will appreciate it. So I was a firefighter for 17 years, for seven years, um, with the Holton Hills Fire Department. And it was really a hectic life. Um, nutrition was poor. Um, my sleep was bad. You know, you, you, night sleep, early sleep, you 24 hour cycle. Um, I wasn't taking vitamins, I wasn't taking minerals. And I found that I was continuously take, getting um, uh, colds and flus. I couldn't shake off a cold and flu. And what I mean about that is, you know, if you get five to six colds or flus a year, that's not ideal. You want to have one to two. And you do want to have some colds. A cold makes your immune system stronger. It's, it's like a practice run for when the big deal comes. So it keeps your immune system going. It allows you to make antibodies and fight off your cold. So I was getting them perpetually and I was wondering what was the issue. When I sat back and started looking at some very key things, I quickly realized it was my lifestyle. You know, um, So I decided it's time for me to hire a naturopathic doctor, start changing my lifestyle, and then start uh, looking at how I can change my, my uh, stress. And my, by changing my stress, I started improving my immune system. So these are some of the secrets and the strategies I use on myself and my patients as we go through trying to understand stress and immune connection, okay? So what really is stress? Stress is a normal response to a situation of pressure or demand that perceives your body of being in danger. So what we wanna do is we want to look at your health and your and, you, and how you process stress. So think of stress as a box, okay? And what we wanna do is in that box, that's what you're comfortable with. And when stress is put onto your body, then um, <clears throat> what'll happen is anything outside of your comfort zone is considered threatening, dangerous, and stressful. So by understanding that, and understanding that eventually you'll go into what's called a fight or flight response, then that's what stress is. And everybody deals with it differently. Some of you might have situations where you watched a movie, it created a tremendous amount of stress, and now you have the cascade that happened. Here are some of the stressors that can beat up your adrenal glands. Some of you were in a car accident or maybe had surgery done. When you have surgery, your body has trauma. That's stress. Some of you have root canals, um, and that caused stress in your body. You might be consuming too much sugar, alcohol, junk food. That could be a stressor in our body. We're around cell phones and microwaves. That could be the stressor in your body. Heavy metals. Many of you live in possibly in mold uh, condition houses. And um, there could be worry, stress, anger, confrontation, toxic friends. So eventually over time, you're gonna, your adrenal glands, your stress response will be overwhelmed. And when you're overwhelmed, your adrenals will completely be beaten up and eventually you will have difficulty uh, dealing with stressful situations. And then what happens secondary is your immune system starts to collapse. So <clears throat> what I usually tell patients, it's, only, it's not just one thing off this list that you're dealing with. It's probably a combination of um, different uh, uh, situations that compound and eventually stress your adrenals stress your immune system, and then you have the complete um, collapse. I'll give you another example. I had this one client who came in and uh, he was over-exercising at the gym seven days a week. And um, because of that physical stress on his body, he couldn't shake off colds and flus and, and bronchitis and, and sore throat. So we recommended that he, you know, he keeps his, um, uh, he keeps his, um, uh, work out to a minimum Monday to Friday and allow for rest days. And just by doing that, his stress situation completely changed. So these are some examples of how stressors beat up your system. Okay. Now, long-term stress is a tremendous risk. And some of you might have some of these conditions, but haven't thought that it's connected to stress. So I'll give you an example. 
anxiety and depression. The beginning stages of anxiety and depression can be, uh, can be the stressful, uh, the signs of your adrenal gland being exhausted and, and losing its function and your body unable to cope with, with certain situations. Substance, you, substance use problems can be long-term. So you're tremendously stressed, you will start using alcohol, you start using um, <clears throat> recreational drugs. Sleep problems might be an issue. Headaches, long-term stress can cause headaches. Gastrointestinal stuff, actually, as a matter of fact, we, we had a patient come in today who talked to us about, you know, the gut completely wrenching up in a stressful situation and couldn't process. So eventually she became constipated and there were definitely big issues that were going on. Um, uh, people in stressful situations have a tendency to have an issue dealing with a weak immune system. Your immune system will now have issues. And just further down, we'll talk a little bit about how your immune system is affected. And then finally, um, blood pressure could be connected to high stress, cardiovascular disease and stroke could be connected to high stress. So long-term stressful situations can be a, a factor in your body from a disease perspective. Now listen, I, I don't think, and I always tell my patients that, you know, dealing with your stress is not just a supplement. And I really want to stress that with you guys tonight. It's not about, am I on the right supplement? You could be on the absolutely best regime and still catch a cold. What you want to do is you want to do a bunch of things under the help your stress uh, umbrella and then that's the way you're going to boost your immune. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's not just going to be about vitamins. It's also going to be about lifestyle. So I hope you appreciate it uh, when we go through all these um, uh, uh, strategies. So here's the cortisol immune connection. So cortisol is a result of your stress. So if you have high stress, your cortisol levels will go up. What this does is it decreases your lymphocytes. You guys know where the lymphocytes are? If you know, write it in the uh, chat box. Lymphocytes are your white blood cells that beat up your immune system, that, that help your immune system to fight anything that's being introduced into your body. So these white blood cells start to diminish and decrease. Well, if you have low white blood cells, you're not going to fight a virus or a bacteria off. So then many of you will have issues with you know, a cold sore, bronchitis, and so forth, the common cold. So you want to have a balanced stress. So you see, it's not just about, oh, I'm on zinc and zinc boosts my immune system, but I keep on getting the cold. Well, if you're dealing with a stressful situation over here, you got into an accident, you're going through a divorce, it doesn't matter what supplements you're on. It's all a package. And that's what I really want to stress when I talk about the equation. It's everything together. And we're going to get into that right now. So this is my de-stress equation. <clears throat> good nutrition plus good vitamins minus emotional and physical toxins, minus, take out the emotional, take out the physical toxins. Multiply all of that by good mindset and amazing meditation and divide that by good sleep and moderate exercise. Can you see that on your screen? I've tried to break it down in an equation form. Nutrition, vitamins, add them together. Take away your emotional toxins and, and physical toxins, mercury, let's say, in your body. You got to get good mindset, positive thinking, good meditation. When I say meditation for you, you guys, you might consider it as breathing. And then finally, good sleep and exercise. We're going to talk about all of these through my, through my presentation. I'm so happy you guys are all with me. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Let's deep dive into each uh, section now. Let's talk about nutrition and vitamins. The perfect diet. <clears throat> so many of you out there are probably on keto, paleo, intermittent fasting, um, low carb diet, high fat diet, low fat diet, like, okay. Love it all, if it works for you, continue. But the research is pretty definitive. A Mediterranean plant-based diet, Mediterranean is the most studied diet in the world, is the best diet forever. Now, if you wanna lose weight, Mediterranean might not work for you, but your outcome is something different. Your goal is weight loss. So you might need to do the intermittent fasting. But when we look at the perfect stress diet, the perfect diet to eat, it's the Mediterranean diet. So what I, and I have a few little nuances in here that are more mine, but you know, I'm a big eat organic whenever you possibly can. 
make sure you throw organic in your diet if you can. Lots of fruit, lots of vegetables, legumes, uh, seeds, fermented fruit, sprouts, uh, pseudo grains occasionally. So what's a pseudo grain? A pseudo grain is something like um, is something like quinoa. Quinoa is a pseudo grain. You know, don't do them often. Do them occasionally. Probiotics, teas like ginger and chamomile tea. Avoid wheat, dairy, eggs, yeast, caffeine, alcohol, nicotine, aspartame. It's all on your screen there. I'm just kind of stressing a few of the points as we go through. I'm a big believer in veggie juicing, vegetable juicing. So some people will ask me, will I make a drink in, in the morning and I blend it? That's a blended juice, that's a smoothie. I'm talking also about do a smoothie and a juice. So like get juice in there. And um, I could see here, Diana, uh, sorry, Deborah. Deborah says, what about water? 100%, water's in there. Um, and we could talk about water, but water's in there. I promise you, good, clean, filtered water is key. And then finally, good organic sources of fish, of meat. And you know what? It's really trendy right now to eat game meat. What we find with game meat, and that might be uh, venison, that might be uh, uh, wild boar, that could be something like that. We're finding that the minerals, the nutrients, the vitamin content in a small piece of game meat is higher than your average red beef, red meat. So game meat has way more packed nutrients, iron in there. So essentially what you want to do is maybe you do, you know, venison on Monday, uh, chicken organic on Wednesday, fish on Friday, Thursday you do some legumes, Tuesday, you're doing a vegetarian kind of meal and you're ready to go. Donna, yes, bison meat is super yummy also. Thank you for that. Now, what you want to do is you want to be predominantly vegetable-based uh, food. And you could do the vegetables anyway, cooked, broiled, boiled, steamed, stir-fried, any way you want. Make sure you're finding a nice balance in your diet. So that's diet for us. We talked a little bit about the Mediterranean diet. That I think is the best diet, the more balanced diet, the most researched diet to help you with stress. So a nice breakfast, lunch, dinner, make sure it's, it's colorful, make sure there's a lot of cross nutrients in there. Sugar, not the answer. So we want to reduce our sugar intake. Sugar is you know, here's the risk with sugar. It, re it really increases inflammation in your joints throughout your body. It does ca cause gut issues. It increases weight gain because now you're storing sugars, right? So you're going to get weight gain. With weight gain and sugar storage, diabetes. So you can see the answer of sugar is, is, is not ideal. You want to reduce your sugar intake. Now, the question up here is, well, how about um, sugar from a, um, from a fruit? For sure, fruit sugar is actually absolutely different. If you juice it, it's high in sugar, but if you eat it, you still have the fiber and you have the minerals and the nutrients that are needed to boost your immune system. So sugars like berries are an amazing source of, um, of um, uh, uh, sugars that are plant-based and healthy. So sugars, you know, they're gonna cause a lot of, um, a lot of this, a lot of, um, uh, inflammation, and it's not ideal for stress. And you'll see a connection. Those of you who are stressed will reach for more sugary stuff. More sugary stuff then affects your weight gain, and then it begins the cascade down of your immune system having an issue. I had a quick question. I wanted to answer this before I move on. Someone asked me, why not eggs? What we're finding with eggs is for some people, they're inflammatory, and for some people, they're not. You just have to decide what your relationship with eggs is. I got IgG tested and I can't do eggs, I don't do eggs. And for you, you might need to get tested to see. So go visit your naturopathic doctor and figure out what your uh, um, inflammatory immunoglobulin sensitive foods are in your diet. So we know that one tablespoon of sugar depresses your immune system by six hours, one tablespoon. And so just imagine if you're eating a sugar-based meal, the first meal in the day, if it's like, a bagel, um, a muffin with no fiber, if it's something sweet, like you know a sugary cereal, then your immune system is gonna be depressed for a day. So the next person you meet who shakes your hand and you touch your face, 
you might have issues with the cold or, or, or the flu. So, you know, watch and pay attention to how much sugar you're consuming. You know, even a teaspoon of sugar in your tea in the morning and a teaspoon at night, three teaspoons make one tablespoon. So teaspoon, teaspoon, teaspoon makes a tablespoon. You're now going to be dealing with uh, immune system issues. Avoid sugar. So since we're talking about stress and anxiety, let's talk a little bit about some of the supplements that will help you out in these, um, uh, in these situations. Um, so let's look at B-complex. You want to have a good B-complex in your diet. So when I say B-complex, you all understand it's all of the Bs at a, at a ratio. So B1, B3, B5, B6, B7, uh, B12, uh, um, you know, all of the Bs, biotin, folic acid, all in this complex. We know that your adrenal glands require Bs to support themselves. There are chemical reactions in there that support the hormones, support the, um, uh, the corticosteroids and the, and the uh, adrenal gland to support itself. So Bs are critical. And when you have an adrenal gland that's sucking up a lot of um, vitamins and stress, your adrenal gland at some point will completely collapse. So you want to make sure you have a good source of a B complex in your, in your supplement uh, protocol. You also want to have uh, your Bs because they do calm the nervous system. They are connected to anxiety. So with anxiety, we have kind of two situations. It could be hormonal or it could be neurotransmitter. We know from the neurotransmitter perspective, so neurotransmitters in your brain, we know B complexes can help. You need a B6 to convert um, a GABA in your brain. You need magnesium to convert GABA. You need B3 to convert GABA. So good GABA causes your anxiety to go down your stress to go down. So Bs are critical. Make sure you have a good B complex in your diet. Second, and I think this one is critically important. These two are the most important. If today you left this presentation and you said, you know, I'm going to decide to put a B complex and a vitamin C, then you've done the best you can to help your adrenal gland deal with stress. So vitamin C, this is what we want to do. With vitamin C, vitamin C is like the energy that goes into your, your adrenal gland. The stress, more stressful you are, the more vitamin C you need. And essentially, it's, like, it's almost like gasoline in your car. It needs it. It needs a lot of it. And a lot of us with vitamin C underperform. You know, we're, we're doing low dosages. And you have to get up into a higher dose range with vitamin C. You know, grams. You have to look at gram support. So with vitamin C, you know, get together with your naturopathic doctor, with your medical doctor, decide what the right amount of vitamin C is to support your stress, support your adrenal gland. And we know vitamin C is excellent for skin, hair, nails. These things, when you're stressed, what's the first thing that happens to you? You start to lose your hair when you're stressed. You'll have patchiness. Think the hair will thin out. So, you know, vitamin C is critical to make collagen and support those systems. And we know that vitamin C is critical for immune system. Study after study after study has showed us that vitamin C is critical for immune. And you had people who tested, you know, 500 milligrams of vitamin C and people who have done grams, 10 grams, 20 grams, 100 grams of vitamin C. Camu Camu is a good natural source of vitamin C. If you prefer to do vitamin C that way, you can do it that way. Okay? So critical vitamin. Let's move on more, um, some analysis. So there was a study done in uh, um, this uh, journal called Kima Acta. It looked at vitamin C on the adrenal gland. What they found that vitamin C had a relaxing inhibitory effect on cortisol production in the adrenal gland in children. So they took a whole bunch of these kids and they looked at their stress and they gave them vitamin C. And when you're highly stressed, you're going to produce cortisol. Remember cortisol. And with cortisol, vitamin C suppressed the uh, cortisol production from the adrenal gland. That's fascinating. If we can relax our cortisol production just with vitamin C, then this is amazing. Then the other study, we looked at um, uh, the Nutrient 2017 uh, study, which looked at vitamin C in your immune system. We know that vitamin C, and this study looked at 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. We know that vitamin C appears to be both respiratory and, and help 
systems infection. We know that. So, you know, ultimately what we want to do is we want to have a good vitamin C source in our diet to help with respiratory and help with uh, system infection. So um, one of the question was, what is the one of the best vitamin C uh, forms to get? Um, a lot of people, uh, the, the most water soluble is the ascorbic acid. Some of you can't deal with ascorbic acid because it has acid. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that um, with the um, ascorbic acid, you might need it buffered. So some of you might need magnesium bound to vitamin C or calcium bound to vitamin C to buffer it. So that might be a little bit more gentle on your stomach. So ascorbic acid is pretty much what you want. Now, there are different sources of, of uh, vitamin C. They come from potatoes, they come from corn, they come from tapioca. You can source that out, you have your own preference. We're not gonna get into that detail today. Let's go back to supplements for your stress and your anxiety. You definitely wanna have magnesium in your uh, protocol. Why? Magnesium is important in your adrenal gland. It helps convert all your healthy hormones. It helps with keeping cortisol levels down. Magnesium, we know, is a muscle relaxant. Less stress on your muscles, less stress on your adrenal glands. We know that it helps the nervous system. Your nervous system is ideal when it comes to healing it. So you want to have magnesium in your protocol. And then a lot of um, good herbal support will involve ginseng, rhodiola, licorice. These are all what we call adaptogens for adrenal. My favorite is, is rhodiola. And what I do with rhodiola is I dose it and I find it gentle. Um, I find it, I like using the one herb and I find it just relaxes me. And I tend to have a nicer sleep when I take my rhodiola as opposed to it. Uh, a rhodiola combo throughout your day and magnesium will give you great sleep at night and helps with the anxiety. So some of you might not be able to do ginseng because it's heating and, and stimulating. Those of you who are completely exhausted and your adrenal glands are, are, are affecting you, you need maybe a ginseng. Those of you who have good adrenals but just want to support it, you might need more rhodiola and vice versa. Again, the details of this, sit down with a naturopathic doctor, um, sit down with your um, um, you know, medical doctor and decide what the supplement regime is going to be for you. Let's get into the immune stuff. And I'm not going to say anything really mind-blowing, but, you know, if I was to tell you today, leave and, you know, think about putting some type of vitamins into your protocol, I probably would say, find a good vitamin D. Vitamin D is critically important. Probably the most studied vitamin uh, and most acceptable vitamin by the medical community and so forth. So vitamin D3, find a good vitamin D3 source. Good for your hormones, boost your immune system. Um, look for multivitamin immune, something that has all of the vitamins in it so you don't have to piecemeal it. So it's got a bit of zinc, it's got a bit of selenium, it's got a bit of um, you know, m minerals in there, it's got some antioxidants in there to boost your immune system. Your immune system needs a lot of anti-antioxidants um, uh, 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 and, and uh, vitamins, sorry, minerals for you to boost your immune system. And that's why you're eating organic, good fruits because in the fruit let's take for instance vitamin let's take for instance an apple some of you guys enjoy an apple a day the apple has vitamin c in it the apple has water the apple has fiber it has complex sugars that you still need it has fiber on the outside the pectin the apple pectin on the outside and inside it's got zinc and selenium and some minerals that boost your immune system okay so that's why we eat our, our, our fruits and our vegetables and that's why we have minerals in our diet. And finally, one of my favorite herbs that has amazing research also is astragalus. Astragalus is, is ideal for um, um, uh, immune boosting. It's one of those mushrooms that's used in a lot of conditions to boost your immune. Now, question I just saw uh, kind of scroll up here from Brenda was, should we take K2? D3, K2, Sometimes D3 is sold separate. Sometimes D3 is put together. It doesn't really matter. The only thing you got to remember, K2 is excellent for bones, hormones, 
parathyroid, thyroid. It's, it's an excellent uh, vitamin to have. It boosts your immune system. Um, those of you who are on blood thinners, remember always there's good and bad sides to a, to a vitamin. Those of you who are on blood thinners cannot be on K2. Let's move on. So let's move into the emotional and physical toxins. Our bodies, and we go through tremendous amount of emotional stuff and physical stuff. So we'll, we'll kind of like, I'll give you an example of an emotional. Maybe some of you are going through a divorce. That's an emotional, difficult time. Maybe some of you have, have um, dealt with, you know, a death in the family. That's an emotional, difficult time. Those are probably the two, divorce, um, death, and financial issues are emotional um, situations that stress the immune system, stress our system. Now, we all have them. It's how we deal with them. It's how we process them in our brain. Some of us are, you know, half, half uh, glass half full, you know, and glass half empty. Some of you will look at that situation and be like, uh, it's a learning experience for me. And some of you will be like, take that, you know, to your grave. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be difficult on your psyche. You're going to think about it daily. You know, I think you have to find that balance between letting go of the emotional stuff and, and processing it and understanding it. Now, the physical toxins are more like heavy metals mold in your house, um, you know, you over-exercising, you produce a lot of lactic acid, that could be a physical toxin. So, you know, a lot of uh, the physical stuff is more of the stuff that's stressing our environment. So this is a bit of a DII stress repair guide. So, you know, we talked about what's involved. Now, here's some ideas that you need to think about. You know, some of you might need to look at talk therapy. Energy therapy like Reiki and touch therapy are all ideal ways to kind of balance out your energy, your chakras. You know, some of you don't believe in the energy stuff, but you might gravitate more to let me have cognitive therapy. Let me have CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, talk therapy. When you're in a stressful situation, you want to get rid of the physical stuff that causes stress. You know, reduce the caffeine. Caffeine gets depletes your B vitamins, depletes your minerals, and is a diuretic. Stressful on your adrenal glands, stressful on your liver. That's the, those are the four reasons, key reasons, why you don't want to be on caffeine forever. And I know many of you use caffeine as a crutch. It's important. Um, you know, caffeine is key. But, you know, if you can reduce it and find a different method, like green tea has small amount of caffeine, but is very beneficial. It has lots of properties, antioxidant and immune boosting properties. So green tea might be your option. Reduce your sugar. Alcohol is sugar. Processed, processed junk food is sugar. Let's take them out and let's see how we, how we do with that. Next, processing worry, anger, fear. Toxic friends, toxic family, you know, you're going to live a lifetime with all this stuff. You're either going to allow it to be in your life or you're going to kind of process it out of your life. And worry, like, you know, the Chinese use this phrase. They say worry injures your stomach, your digestive system. The moment your digestive system is injured, you won't absorb, your immune system is shot. We all know that your immune system, 50% of your immune system is in your gut. The moment you start to worry, your gut is done. So please. Think about your, how you process that, those, those key emotions. You need a vacation, take it. You need to do yoga, maybe stretch. Some of you might not like yoga. Maybe you wanna start stretching. So let's, let's go to the gym and start to stretch. And meditation, instead of meditation, let me use another word, deep breathing, breathe. You know, at school we learn grammar, school we learn math, but none of us have learned how to properly breathe. There's actually a true proper way of breathing. And you know, a quick, quick, you know, there's many different ways, but the easiest way for me to describe is breathe in for five seconds, hold for four, breathe out for five. And the deeper the, the lung and the air goes into it, the, the, more, the more oxygen exchange and the healthier your body will be. So you want to make sure breathing is part of your technique. I just saw uh, uh, Vess share with me calm music, 100%. DYI, you put on your calm music and just relax and breathe and calm your mind. Any thought that goes in, dump it. It doesn't belong to you because it, it not, doesn't serve you any purpose. And then finally, more of the physical stuff. Look at your home. Look at your food. Do you have metals in your body you have to take out? Do you have mercury fillings you have to remove and then take out the metals? 
Is your environment toxic? Do you go to work and you're, you know, you're breathing in chemical toxins? Do you have mold in your bathroom? Assess all that stuff. That's key and important for you to um, go through your, your repair, your, your, your uh, repair. So that was the emotional component, the physical component. Let's get into the mindset, okay? Mindset and meditation. I use the two words because I think they're, they're, they're wonderful. So gratitude, the, the art of gratitude has shown to quiet the, um, the, and transform, quiet the mind and transform human beings. We know the word gratitude embodies the word of thank you. There was a 2003 study da, done by Ammons and McCourt, and they pretty, pretty much found that those people who did a gratitude journal, you know, just wrote a few things in a journal, found they were, their physical pain was reduced. They had a greater feeling of well-being, and they had a better uh, immune system um, in, uh, in, their, in their health. So doing a daily gratitude journal, you know, what you're grateful in the morning and then what you're grateful at in the evening will help your mindset. And it does one key thing. We think of 15,000 negative thoughts throughout the day. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't eat that. I shouldn't go there. I should be more active. Well, if you take your mind and you allow it to just relax, say what it's grateful for, you can't think of negative and positives at the same time. So you're going to think of the positive and you're going to find a greater release of endorphins throughout your body that allow you to heal and address your stress. So that's mindset. Try to practice a, a, a level of gratitude. Meditation. So on my screen there, you pick what you want. And I'm just going to kind of really outline them quickly. You might like to pray. You might like to be philosophical. Some of you just want to have a conversation. You might like to read, sing, write poetry. These are all forms of expression. Drawing and gratitude. And anytime you do these, you actually go through a level of meditation. If I hooked up an ECG machine uh, onto your chest and watched you color, let's say I gave you some crayons and you were coloring, you would find your complete system would go into a relaxed mode and your oxygen intake would actually go up. So performing some level of mindful meditation or mindful breathing using these techniques will definitely help with your stress. Okay. Sleep and exercise. <clears throat> so let me, um, there's a quick question here that I saw. What does mold do to you? What does bathroom mold do to you? <laughs> because we just finished the topic. Thanks, uh, Kay Saleh. Um, so what does bathroom mold do to you? When your body inhales mold, your immune system kicks in and it says, okay, what am I going to do with this mold? I got to take it out of the body because it's a foreign substance. So your body will work on taking the mold and here comes the bacterial infection and you will continuously and perpetually have a cold or a flu. That's what mold does. It stresses your immune system out. Hopefully that helped you out. So let's go to sleep and exercise next. Very critical uh, component. Sleep is the most underrated activity in our lives. This is from an MD at the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Rosen. He says it's underrated. And if you did, a, if I did a sleep analysis on you, um, you probably would all, I would probably say about 80% of you would probably not do well on it. The sleep journal in 2017 said this, basically they took two pairs of identical twins. They took their blood then they put them through sleep durations. One slept less, one slept more. And then they took their blood again and looked at their white blood cells. And what they found was a higher level of white blood cells in patients in the twin that slept more than the identical twin that slept less. And what they found is that twin that slept more was able to adapt to stressors in their society than the twin that slept less. And it's it's, it's a fascinating study, but take yourself. If you sleep less, you probably will, will be short. You'll get angry. You won't adapt to situations, and your immune system will be low. So, I mean, you could take the information and, and uh, translate it into your life. So here are some quick sleep expert tips. I sometimes use it with my patients. 
but these are some of the tips that I've kind of con compiled over the years. Get a new pillow if you have to, or maybe even changing your pillowcase, maybe start there because that might be a little cheaper and see if that helps you. I like to do two things. I like to have my bedroom dark and I like to have it cool at about 19.5 degrees Celsius. Some of you might even have it cooler. So cool your room to have better, um, better uh, sleep. Many of you practice deep breathing before bed will calm you and put you to sleep. Some of you like to take warm baths or maybe add an Epsom salt, a warm shower or an Epsom salt bath might help you out. And the biggest thing, you gotta get rid of these things. You gotta get rid of your phone, critical, critical important. Uh, put them away, dim your lights and prepare, prepare to get to bed and go to sleep. You wanna have at least eight hours, two four hour REM cycles, two four hour REM cycles, okay? Here's some quick nutrients that you might want to put in to help your sleep. Magnesium, you know, two caps of magnesium at bedtime will, will, will get you sleeping amazing. Epsom salt has magnesium in it. So when you soak in Epsom salt, the magnesium goes through your skin, into your muscles, relaxes your nervous system and your muscles, okay? So Epsom salt is a great way to relax. Now, the other thing with magnesium, it supports your immune system, it supports your nervous system, and it supports your neurotransmitter system in your brain. So magnesium is key. L-theanine is another one you want to have in your protocol to help you sleep. What it does is it mimics, you know, um, classical music. So, you know, classical music puts you in like uh, delta uh, brain waves, like relaxes you. That's what L-theanine does. So a good L-theanine um, supplement will, will relax your brain. And then uh, some of you might um, um, uh, do melatonin. Now, and then everybody does not need melatonin. I want to stress that out for sure. Everybody needs to determine if they need melatonin. If they do, you supplement. Because some of you are already making melatonin. You only need melatonin if you're deficient in your brain in production of melatonin. So, you know, look to get your melatonin assessed and decide if that's a good sleep aid for you. And finally, I love essential oils or, or herbal teas like chamomile, lavender, lemon balm to calm the body. So either way, whether you nebulize them and you, and you allow them to like get into the air and you breathe them or you consume them as a tea, amazing. Um, so we know that um, a journal, the, the 2018 journal Nutrients looked at magnesium. And when you increase the amount of magnesium, it actually improves the sleep performance in adults. And many people even had their insomnia improve with magnesium. Now, some of you are asking me for dosages, and I'm going to just be straight up. I'm not going to give you a dose because if I give you a dose and it harms you, then that's not ideal for you. All of you need to definitely sit back, visit a naturopathic doctor, assess what's best for you. Some of you, I'm going to run a magnesium um, um, uh, webinar in a couple of months. And I'm going to get into every single magnesium and what it does in your body. And that's going to be here. So I'm going to hope to see all of you guys here next time. Uh, I think it's running in uh, November, or December. It's called uh, uh, Magical Magnesium. We're going to talk about the magnesium. For me to tell you a dose, it doesn't make sense because there's 10 different forms of magnesium and 10 different dosages that you can do. And there's so many of you on this webinar, I can't get into the detail. I really recommend you sit down with your naturopathic doctor, decide what your dose is, and then you'll get the best result. Hopefully that helps you out. Let's get back. Exercise, exercise is key. You need to have exercise. Um, Good Life did this report in 2015, and they looked at how many people use their membership. And they found that 10% of their members who had a gym membership use their membership. What I'm trying to prove by this point is there are many of us who don't exercise. That's 10% of the 10% who exercise. So really that calculates to maybe two to 5% of the population is actively in the gym. Many of us are sedentary. COVID didn't help. COVID made things even worse. The biggest complaint I heard in my clinic was, oh, I haven't done yoga. COVID just, just bummed me out. I haven't stretched. I haven't walked. I haven't run. It's like, why not? You have all this time. Treat yourself. Take care of yourself. Stretch. Do yoga. Go for a walk. Running. Swimming. Choose the activity that makes you happiest. 
a question I ask in my visits is this. I say to my patients, when you were young, what activity did you like to do? And they'll say something like, oh, I like to swim. Okay, now you're an adult. Why don't you like swimming? Ah, uh, but that was something that brought you a lot of joy. Um, like, do that and, and it'll be phenomenal for you. And when they rediscover the things they did when they were children, it's like amazing. And do the exercise you like. I just saw Janet say kayaking. For sure. I love it. Do what you love. Go and do it and you will feel amazing. So exercise, key. What I say about exercise is this. You want to exercise five days a week between 20 and 40 minutes of some type of light to moderate exercise. If you do that, then you will be amazing, okay? Put that in you and you will feel even better. How do we build our best stressed life ever? So what I've done here is I've tried to give you some strategies. Today, if you get off the presentation and you sit on your couch, and you close your eyes and you deep breathe, I almost guarantee you are going to be that much closer to living a stress-free life. Take three of the things I proposed, a vitamin, a meditation, and sleep, and put them in. Do them for the next 21 days. You will create habit. And from there, you add more to it. You add more to it. And eventually, you're going to create a routine. One of my mentors used to say, you want to change your life? You start by the morning and you start adding little bits of information into your day to get you where you want to go. So today you start with a week of meditation. Next week, you'll do meditation and stretching. Then you make sure the night before you go to bed early. Then you make sure you're, you're eating ve uh, vegetables throughout your day. And then you start adding on the proper habits to help you manage your stress. Stress will always be there. It's all about how you manage it. Okay, so think about how you're going to build your best stress-free life moving forward. Okay, so we're going to take questions now. Uh, we've got about uh, 12 minutes to take questions, but I want to say one more thing. These are the seven essentials of life. You've got to ask these questions. And listen, we're going to make this uh, presentation available. I want you to download it. This is all your information. Enjoy it. Share it. Do whatever you want with it. But think of these seven essential things. What are you eating? How or what are you breathing? Clean air, breathing regularly, what are you breathing? What are you drinking? How are you moving? What are you thinking? What is the way that you're living? And finally, when are you resting? If you put these all together and you start asking the questions and start making little changes under each category, you're gonna see the most amazing stress reduced life ever. Excellent. Question time. I'm going to pull out the questions. I see there's already 28 questions. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm going to kind of speed through all these questions here quickly, okay? So um, I'm just going to leave this on your screen. If you want to follow us, this is where you're going to follow us at Camp Rev, um, Facebook. Uh, it's all up there for you. Let me start. Okay. Janice. What are your thoughts on the use of black seed oil with respect to COVID? Okay, so I'm not gonna talk about COVID. Um, uh, it's, there aren't a lot of studies out. It isn't controver it's controversial. Um, I'm not gonna talk about COVID. All I'm gonna talk about is immune boosting uh, and go from there. And if you have um, a pecti peptic ulcer, Dan Jen says, I think I have a peptic ulcer. You gotta get that assessed. You gotta go see a naturopath and, and have them help you go through that. Sorry, I hope I, um, uh, answered that question for you. It might not be to your satisfactory. Can you address stress and poor eating habits, specifically sugar? So we did, Deb. Um, we did that right away as we got into the presentation. So hopefully I addressed that question for you. So sugar depresses your immune system by six hours a day. If you have sugar and sugar and sugar, you're going to never have an immune system that's going to work properly for you. So you want to make sure you're eating a lot of uh, vegetables. Okay. Uh, recording. Yes, Val, this will be recorded for you. Um, I've actually hit record and it's recording on the cloud and it will be available for repeat. Hope you guys enjoy it again twice. Can you test for overload on your adrenal glands? M, M, K, great question. Yes, you can test overload on your adrenal glands. There are some saliva and urine tests 
then measure your cortisol levels. There's a test called the Dutch test out there. Ask your naturopath, ask your medical doctor. They'll be happy to help you. Great test to assess your adrenal load. Okay. Thank you, M. Anonymous. What are a few examples of fermented foods? I'll give you two. Kimchi and sauerkraut. My two favorites. Let's move on. And they will boost your immune system. They will heal your gut, feed your probiotics, boost your immune system, okay? Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Okay, good. I just heard my, uh, I think my headset's off. You might be hearing me off of the mic right now. So what's wrong with caffeine? So I went through caffeine, okay? Um, what I wanna do is um, with caffeine, caffeine does four things. It depletes your B vitamins and your minerals. It is a diuretic and makes you go. It stresses your adrenal glands. And finally, what it does is it stresses your um, liver. Four things, you wanna avoid caffeine. Start thinking about matcha green tea. Hope that answers your question, Nate. Let's move on. Um, Martine, uh, BBQ fried, baked, cooked the meat. Yeah, you could bake it, you could uh, fry, create anti uh, free radicals, barbecue creates free radicals. That's a whole different topic. You know, you eat less of it, bake it, fry it, but eat less of it, and then you'll get around that whole issue. And I don't want to tell you to be vegetarian, vegan. I don't know you, and I want to give you advice like that. What about sugar in dried fruit? That's, I saw that go through the chat, and I'm going to answer it for you, Alfred. So this is Alfred's question. Dried fruit has a lot of sugar. When you dry, it actually, the sugar content almost goes 10x, right? So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're not eating lots of dried fruit. Um, you know, dried fruit does have sugar. So you might use it as flavoring. You might have some raisins in your oatmeal, let's say. You might have some dried uh, cranberries in your, um, you know, your, your um, uh, cereal. Like, keep it simple. You don't want to have a lot of dried fruit, lots of sugar in that. Hope that answered your question. Val, you've been here once. Here's number two. How about smoothies? Yes. Smoothies are amazing. What you want to do with smoothies is you want it to be, you want to have water, you want it to have, you know, um, you know, some type of um, like milk, nut milk, add in some of your favorite fruit, put in some avocado and some um, um, kale, give it a blend, make it a nice healthy smoothie. That's what you want to do, okay? Um, Rona, Rona wants to know uh, if I could give her some uh, advice um, if, you're, if you're pregnant. So when you're pregnant, pretty much you can't do herbs, but you can do B complex, vitamin C, zinc, selenium, vitamin D. So I'd look at more vitamins as opposed to herbs. That would be my advice to you, Rona. Hopefully that helps you out. Guys, I've got about six minutes. I'm gonna keep on going. Uh, I see more questions are, are starting to show up here. Um, if you do have questions on the screen there, I posted my details where you could find me on Insta, where you can find me on Facebook, and uh, you can go to my website. So let me get to Bridget's answer question here. Are all vegetables okay? Now, you know, what I would suggest is, you know, if you haven't been assessed your food sensitivities, I would say all vegetables are okay. But if you've gone that extra step to test your foods, to see what foods cause inflammation in your system, I could see you're, you have arthritic issues, that might be your next bet, bet, your next move. And that'll tell you which vegetables are best for you and which are not good for you. The not good for you vegetables will probably cause inflammation in your joints, and that'll be a big issue for you. Hopefully that answers your question, Bridget. Uh, Sandra, so Sandra, um, uh, says, what about honey? I like honey, just use it in moderation. Honey still is sugar. But what's interesting with honey in it, there's um, pollen and there's nutrients and there's you know phytochemicals and sugar. So use it sparingly, don't overuse it. It still is sugar, you wanna be careful with honey. What about organic coconut brown sugar, Alfred says. Good question, Alfred, what about it? Um, you know, it's still sugar. Alfred, and you want to use little bits of it, maybe not as frequent. 
Maybe it's in your one tea and then you're done. But if you don't have to do it, then you don't need to do it. What do I think about nutritional yeast? I put it in a lot of my food. This is for June. June, I put it in my food. Definitely continue using it. Um, it's wonderful. It has a lot of B vitamins. A lot of nutritional yeast has B12 in it. So take it. Alex wants to know, what about dark chocolate? Yes. So read the label. It's got to be a high dose dark chocolate and it has to have no milk in it. Um, water, dark chocolate, that's it. Uh, Alex, hopefully that answers your question. Then that becomes an antioxidant with some magnesium and it's a wonderful, uh, and moderation, not too much. Can you take B and C every day and when you're feeling unwell? Yes. So Anonymous says, can you take B and C's every day? Yes, you can. Um, even when you're feeling unwell, yes, because it'll support your adrenal and boost your immune system. Hopefully that helps. Martha, Martha asked me, is dried fruit okay as sugar source? Nope, dried fruit is not okay as sugar source. You want to use fruit, fresh fruit as sugar source, okay? Bob, Bob says, uh, you, mes you mentioned collagen. Yes, collagen you make in your body and you have to give the resources. Does the reduced stress help with, immune, with the immune system? Yes. So when you would do, reduce stress, it definitely helps with your immune system, Bob. So um, you want to make sure that, you know, you reduce your stress and your immune system goes up and then support it with, with some uh, good foods and good nutrients. And that'll definitely build it. Collagen, vitamin C makes collagen. So when you're taking vitamin C, it boosts your collagen in uh, uptake, uh, production. Ellen, let me look at my time. Three minutes. I'm going to see as many questions I can get in three minutes. Ellen, what's a good uh, vitamin B complex? Okay, Ellen, you've asked me a complicated question. I'm not going to answer it. Sorry, I apologize. You know what? Sit down with your naturopathic doctor and uh, your medical doctor, and they'll be happy to do that. Everybody needs something different. Um, I can't just, you know, it's, this is just very generic information. You need to be assessed and decide what vitamin is best for you. Hopefully that helps. What type of magnesium is the best? It depends. There's 10 types of magnesium. There's, um, there's bisglycinate, there's citrate, there's oxida, oxida, oxidative uh, vit, uh, magnesium. There is, um, um, there's so many sources. So what I will teach you in the um, magnesium workshop, which Jade, Jade you're going to be there, is we're going to talk about vitamins, okay? We're going to talk about magnesium. Hope you're there. Um, Next, uh, Jacqueline, how much magnesium should I take before bed? Okay, Jacqueline, I'm not going to answer that question. Um, figure it out with your uh, healthcare practitioner. They'll give you a specific answer for you, your body type. You could be big, you could be thin, you could be short, you could be tall. I don't know what the right dose for you is. Meet with your doc. They'll be happy to, to um, uh, um, tell you which one, which one you want to do. Um, so, Zenny, again, there are five different types of magnesium. What I'm going to say, Zenny, is uh, like I said, there's the citrate, the bisglycinate, the um, uh, uh, oxidase. There's the um, uh, there's another one that's missing. My, it's, it's not on my mind right now because I'm not focusing on magnesium. When you come to my magnesium presentation, I'd be happy to share all that information with you. I've got like one minute here. Um, I promised I'd stay on time. It's going to be a one hour presentation. So I'm going to answer a couple of quick ones here and I'm going to say my goodbyes, everyone. Um, here's uh, um, uh, what about unpasteurized honey for a sweetener? This is for Sandra. Um, Sandra, unpasteurized honey, you could use it, just don't use a lot of it. And finally, um, Brenda. Brenda says for a sweetener, what about monk fruit? And stevia, yes. So monk fruit and stevia are one of those fruits that does not affect your blood sugar level. You definitely can use those. Hopefully that helped everybody out. So I want to, on behalf of you know, uh, the team and everybody here, I want to thank you all for spending your day with me and uh, this one hour presentation. I hope you all walked away with something that applies to you or something that I made you think. Um, that um, you know will help you out. Um, this is my information. If you're if you're interested in uh, uh, connecting with me, um, ultimately, ultimately, let me see. Hold on. I want to thank you all. Um, if you want to learn more, there's the digits there. Um, you can uh, kind of tap in and see 
more specific questions. I had fun with you all. I hope you join me again next time. I know there's going to be a next time. I'm going to have fun educating you again. And I hope you enjoyed the energy. I hope you enjoyed the insights. Um, all this stuff's going to be available for repeat. And I'm going to try to make sure the presentation is available. You can download it, share it, um, you know, spread it around. Folks, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you on behalf. My name is Dr. Elias Marku. It was my pleasure being your wellness educator. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.